Welcome to the Quick Start Guide to Photoshop, Part 3. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today we're finishing up our series called the Quick Start Guide to Photoshop. We started out episode one basically going through and like showing you guys some of the preferences and things you need to set up Photoshop for using the program if you're an early on user. And episode two, we talked about some of the fundamentals to actually using Photoshop, some of the more commonly used tools. We went over layers and layer masks and things like that. So if you guys are new to Photoshop and need some brushing up, be sure to check out episodes one and two. And today's episode is gonna be relatively quick. Basically, we're gonna go over some like naming and file structure things. And then I'm gonna show you guys the proper ways to save out your images so you can make sure you can always get back to get your layer filed as well as get images on the internet in the proper color space. So here's the image we've been working on. We're gonna make a couple more adjustments to this image just to kind of like show you guys that the tools that we learned in our last episode are really just about the only things you guys need to know for the majority of what you wanna do in Photoshop. Now looking at her eyes, I, I wanna brighten these up a little bit. So I'm gonna show you guys two different ways to do this. First way we're gonna do, I'm gonna create a new layer, okay? And we're gonna grab our brush tool and then I'm gonna grab like a nice bright orange color, something like this. And we're gonna paint with our brush tool right over top of our subject's eyes. Just the lens is there. Now, I'm not being incredibly careful. I'm not trying to get all of the lenses. I've got a very soft edge brush. I'm trying to stay well inside of the lenses, but I'm not too concerned about what I'm doing here. All right, because I'm gonna change the blend mode. Now, if I were to leave it like that, obviously that looks horrible, but we're gonna change the blend mode and fix it up. So from here, let's try something like our soft light layer and see what that does. Really nice effect. So we can see just kind of choosing a color and painting soft light, we're able to kind of change it. It changes the color of the lenses and kind of lightens them up. Overlay is gonna give us a slightly different effect there, a little bit more of a harsh look or we could go through for something like Color Dodge, which is even in a more extreme effect. Now, if you're gonna use something like Color Dodge, obviously that looks horrible. I always recommend trying to change the opacity. You might get something that you'd like a little bit better. All right, overlay, that looks pretty good and an opacity right about there. Now, let's say we wanna do something similar, but I don't wanna use my layers. Let's say, or I don't wanna use just the brush tool. I'm gonna to grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna to go to Curves, and now I'm gonna to try to do something relatively similar with the curves. So I'm gonna click here and drag this area up. All right, and you can see it's gonna affect my entire image because I haven't done anything to the layer mask yet. I'm gonna to go to my red channel and I'm gonna click and drag this up. And then I'm gonna to go to my blue channel and I'm gonna click and drag this down. Okay, now let's hit Command I on the layer mask. It's gonna invert the layer mask and I can go in and paint in white right over here on top of our image. There we go, in basically the same area. So let's go ahead and let's just compare those. So here's using the curves and here's using an overlay. Now, they're relatively similar and you could probably get them to look even the same if you had like the same adjustments and this could be like a little bit stronger and things like that. So you can see using completely different techniques, you can actually get really similar results. And that's kind of like the big lesson with Photoshop is like, if I'm doing something some way and you know a different way to do it, there's usually not a right and wrong. It's usually just these are different ways to do it. As long as you're not destroying your image by working on the base layer and you actually are creating layers and using layer masks and good, you know, like naming techniques and a file, like <laughs> as long as you, you're using layers, you're cool. So just a cool example, there are a ton of ways to do things in Photoshop. Now, even after I've created that layer over here, let's go ahead and delete that curves adjustment layer. This is my overlay layer that I painted with this yellow color. Even after I painted that, I can still change this color. All I have to do is hit Control or Command U, which is the same thing to go Image, Adjustments, and then Hue Saturation. You can see the keyboard shortcut right there, Control or Command U. And in the first episode of the Quick Start Guide, we showed you guys how to actually change those keyboard shortcuts. Okay, now I can actually change the hue of whatever's on this layer, just by dragging the hue to the left and the right. So I can totally change that. So even though I started off with the yellow, I'm not stuck there. And that's the wonderful part about using layers is we can always change that. Let's say cancel. I'm gonna show you guys another way we can grab our marquee selection tool. I'm gonna make a selection over there. Now remember we talked about in earlier episodes, 
If an area is selected, that's the only thing that's going to get changed, right? So now what happens if I hit Command U? Well, I'm gonna change my hue and look at that. It's just this area of this layer that actually receives the change. So you can see by combining all the different tools and techniques, you can get a ton of great complicated effects, even though you're just using the simple basic tools. All right, that looks pretty cool. I actually kind of like that. Let's go ahead and zoom out. We're gonna do, let's create a curves adjustment layer. I'm gonna click right here in the middle and we're just gonna drag this down quite a bit. Let's make the white point down a little bit too. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab a elliptical marquee tool. Let's make a selection right over here and on the layer mask, I'm gonna hit command I. So that's gonna invert the layer mask. There we go. And we're gonna add a vignette. Now, all I have to do to add this vignette is go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. So adding a blur just does exactly what you would think it would do. And we talked about how to create a keyboard shortcut for the Gaussian Blur in the first episode of this series. So as I bring my radius up, the blur gets a little bit more soft and soft and soft, somewhere around there. Now, what we're blurring here is the layer mask for this curves adjustment layer. So the background layer, everything else is staying the same, because we're selected on the layer mask here, that's what actually receives the blur. All right, let's go ahead and just lower the opacity just a little bit. And then I'm gonna warm up her face just a little bit as well. So let's go to a curves adjustment layer, bring this up, and then some basically similar to what we did with the glasses. Bring the red channel up and the blue channel down just a little bit. I'm gonna hit Command I on this layer mask, and then we're gonna use a brush tool with a nice large brush just to paint and that's gonna just warm her face up a little bit. You can see that's basically, basically the effect we were going for there. All right, that looks great. Let's go ahead and shift click the two of those and I'm gonna hit Command G. So we've got a couple groups now. It's really good idea. I don't generally name every single layer that I work on, but a lot of the time I do name my groups and it, it helps me when I'm going back to these files, know what's going on inside of these groups. And if I need to deliver files to a client, especially if, it depends on what kind of client. If you're a wedding photographer and you're gonna deliver uh, you know, an album to your client, you don't need to give them like a layered file, like a PSD or a TIFF, that, that's not important. But if you are a professional retoucher and you wanna deliver images to your client, then oftentimes they will ask for the layered file. So um, you're maybe not a professional retoucher if you're watching this video, but you're probably on your way to be getting one. All right, so let's go ahead and name these layers. So we've got our first layer. Let's turn this off and on to see what it is. That is our glasses group. So we're gonna double click right there and I'm gonna call this glasses. All right, this group, let's turn this off and on. I'm gonna double click there and we're gonna call this color. Okay, so it's super simple. Anyone who got this image or me coming back to it, I know exactly what's going on with these layers. All right, so now that we've done some like light adjustments to this image, let's just talk a little bit about saving. It's a really good idea whenever you're saving your document out to save out a couple of different copies. The first file you wanna save out is going to be a layered file. That way, if you decide you wanna make a change later on, you can always get back in here and change those layers around. You don't have to start from scratch. Okay, so layered files. Let's go ahead and go to file. I'm gonna to go to save as. There we are. So here in our save as, we're just going to go right down to our episode. There we go. I'm just gonna stick this on the desktop because I don't mind. We're going to call this glasses. Okay, glasses.tif. Now it's going to say layers check. So it's going to have the layers embedded with it. You can use a TIFF here or a Photoshop document, which is a PSD. Uh, either are okay. I really, I like TIFF. I think it's a little bit easier and more programs can read a TIFF than just a PSD. And they both contain layers. They're both great. So TIFF is what I recommend, glasses.tif. All right, let's just create a new, there we go, desktop here, shift command N. All right, and we're gonna call this quick start guide. So we're gonna put that in a folder, glasses.tif. It's gonna use layers and it's gonna embed the Profoto RGB color profile. We remember we talked about that in the first episode. So we're gonna hit save. There we go. And all these options, you wanna leave pretty much exactly what they are. Okay, so that is our layered file. That means anytime I want, let's say like I deliver this and the client's like, oh, you did kind of a sloppy masking job with your, you know, changing the color of the eyeglasses. Can you go back and fix that? 
You don't have to be like, oh man, I gotta start all the way from the beginning. You just open that same doc, the same TIFF, you go back into your color, you look over here, and then you say, okay, cool. I'll put a layer mask on there. I'm gonna zoom into my layer and I'm gonna paint black right over here. There we go, right around these edges. And you know what? My client was right. I was a little bit of sloppy there. But now I fixed it and that took two seconds. I am so glad that I saved a layered file. Okay, but if you're actually gonna be delivering a file to, let's say, uh, most clients, they're not gonna need layered files and the internet doesn't need la la <laughs> the internet doesn't need layered files. So you're wanna, gonna wanna save that layered file for yourself, that TIF for yourself. But you're also gonna wanna make another copy and that's where going to save for web is generally recommended. So I'm gonna go to file and then we're gonna go down to save for web. Okay, now here, save for web, I recommend this for a couple reasons. First, it automatically is checked to convert to sRGB, which is the color space that most web browsers use. So if you've ever uploaded your image to the internet and it hasn't looked right color-wise, this is probably why. So it's not in the right color space. So making sure that this is checked, convert to sRGB, will make sure that it will be in the right color space when you're ready to upload it. Here you can choose to up save it as a JPEG, as a PNG if it has transparency, or as a GIF. I'm gonna choose a JPEG. You can choose your quality and you get a really nice little preview of what your quality looks like here as well. There we go, there's our full size preview. If I bring my quality down, you can see the image gets worse and worse and worse the lower I bring my quality down. All right, you can even do like a two up or a four up and you can have each of these. So like this could be 100% quality. This could be like 5% quality and you can kind of look at each of them. Okay. I recommend a quality right around 60. That I find that I really can't tell a visual difference between 100 and 60 and it keeps my file size a little bit lower. So I like that. You can also change your image size here. Let's say it's gonna go on the internet. I want it to load fast. I don't need it to be this big. You know what, I'm gonna put that out there as a thousand pixels wide. All right, and here you can see it automatically resizes and gives you a nice little preview. So here it's going to tell you it's gonna be a JPEG. It's 176.5 kilobytes. It even tells you the upload, up, you know, how fast it would take to upload. None of us are at a 50 kilobyte modem, so we could probably change that. And it'll tell you how long it's actually going to take to upload. You can zoom in, zoom out, and things like that, and uh, you're good to go. So what we're, we're gonna do is, you can even click preview. And what it does is it's gonna open a web browser and it's going to preview this folder, or this image, on a web browser. So you can see the exact size as well as the color. All right, here it is. Google opened up too. There we go. This is our preview in a web browser. Oh, it even tells us all of our little dimensions and things like that. So really, really cool, all within Photoshop. So let's go back to Photoshop. I'm gonna hit save here in the same folder. So let's go to the desktop, quick start guide, part three, and we're gonna call it glasses dot JPEG. And sometimes if I am, in this case, I put my width at, the, at a thousand pixels. Sometimes if I do that, I'll just like W1000. So I just name it glasses and then width 1000. So I know with, before I go opening and things like that, I know what I've already set the width, width at. So we're gonna hit save and we're good to go. So that's basically how we work with images in Photoshop and how we get them out to where our clients and the internet can see them. Guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me and learning Photoshop. I hope this helped out. If you didn't catch one and two, be sure to catch the quick start guide to Photoshop part one and two. And if you have any other ideas for future episodes, please leave them in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And the best part about Flurn on YouTube is that we release a couple episodes every single week teaching Photoshop and photography for free. So if you want to stay up to date, up to date, <laughs> up to date, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, which you can do by clicking on the screen right now. Guys, thanks so much and have a great life. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? Have a great life. Learning later, guys. Have a great uh, everything. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>